Hello, top of the morning to you. <laughs> hey everybody, happy St. Patrick's Day. And so today I am doing a portrait of a redhead, of course, for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and so we're gonna try something a little bit different today. Um, um, I normally don't do portraits, a lot of portraits, but I wanted to try to get into some portraits looking at a bunch of artists that I saw this week who were um, showing me how to really paint tight, tighter. And so I wanna paint a little bit tighter than I normally do, but I still wanna keep the looseness to it. And so here we go. And um, cheers, everybody. <laughs> Can I have my coffee? <laughs> and let's see. We're going to start out with our lights and darks. Lights to dark, I mean. And so when I look at this, I look at the lights. And so basically, um, the background is the light, right? And her face is the light. And everything else is my darks. And so. That's why I'm going to kind of go through everything because the hair right here will be darker and her face is part of the light. And so what I'll do is I'll do the parts of the light and I'm going to put some shadows across the face like I normally, um, like I want to do. They didn't have it in the picture. And I actually took this photograph into Photoshop a little bit and messed around with it because um, I wanted to it was okay but it was really really dark and it wasn't I wanted the brightness and I wanted the circles of confusion and circles and um, a little optical scatter and we got a little bit of everything in this painting so I just kept on manipulating it in Photoshop to get it to look where I wanted it to look and then I um, drew it up and she's not looking so much up in my drawing as she's as like she is in the photo and the photo she's kind of looking up and I've got it kind of looking over up but to the side more and so here we go so let's do the background first. If you have questions, let me know. Just speak out. Chat away. And um, I forgot the name of the artist that I saw this week that did a bunch of tight, but he's also very loose. I forgot his name. Maria, maybe you know. <laughs> uh, um, I forgot his name that I sh showed. Good morning, Maria. And so let me wet. I'm going to... I might as well wet the background. Just going to wet everything. I'm working on 300 pound Stonehenge. And I don't have it mounted this morning. I didn't have time. And so I'm just doing 11 by 14. I could mount it later, but didn't have time today. Normally I like to mount my paper now onto something, but didn't have time. And so. And also the colors I'm going to use is orange, a lot of orange, of course, but what's the opposite of orange is blue, but I'm not going to use a, this is like a reddish orange. So I want to do more of a bluish green, which would be like a, um, turquoise. So I'm gonna do a little turquoise in my thing for the, um, for the background also. So I'm going to take a little, put a little turquoise back here. I'm going to keep it really light. I'm going to take it from turquoise to an orange. And also I'm going to use a little bit of pink with my orange to get it that salmon-y color that I like so much. I kind of wish they had made us. I have to look for a salmon-y color to see if there is actually one out there. If Holby makes a salmon color. This, of course, is um, turquoise and the other side is horizon blue. And so I'm going to, oh, what am I doing here? Let me think, let me think. <laughs> it's weird how when you start a painting, you really, you have to kind of think it through it a little bit. And so I'm going to keep this a little bit orangey yellow. And I need this dark enough so that I can make circle of confusion circles in there. Yeah, that's his name. Thanks. <laughs> Ood's Korea, Korea, Korea. Yeah, if you look at his work, um, it's amazing. I love his the tightness that he gives and also the looseness that he has in his work. I love the work. And I'm, I'm, this week we're going to be doing, next this Thursday, we're going to be doing a painting of a, a young girl with a backpack on and she's just looking at the sun. One more week until Kanuga. You're right. And I'm so excited. And I've actually been filling all my pellets because I'm, I'm bringing all the supplies for everybody this year. And so I'm teaching at Canuga and nobody has to bring supplies in my class. And so we're, I was filling it all up this, uh, yesterday and cause I have had to fill 25 
25 um, gouache palettes and 25 watercolor palettes. So they're all set. They're all set to go next week. Next, I'm heading up there um, next next Saturday. So there will be no class next Saturday in McHenry. But I do have class all week. So there's a nice light. Just I'm going to keep it simple, the light. I, I don't want to be too crazy with the light. I just want some really nice, nice warm. I want the sun to be kind of here. And it's going to be a little bit darker over here. And the turquoise will be part of the leaves too. And so I'll have a little bit more turquoise down in this area to kind of combat, not combat, but kind of um, com complement the, the orange that I'll be using for the hair. And so I'm just, again, I wet the surface before, if you were not here right away, I wet the surface. Um, I think I have a couple spaces left. I think right now, um, I think I have 20 people in my class in Canuga. I think that's what um, Megan had told me, but that was last week, so I'm not sure if um, we got some more people because I was promoting it a little bit. So maybe we're up a little bit, but I'm going to bring enough for 20 because I, I guess the limit in the classroom is 24, so... I always bring extra just in case. Hey, Karen. Hey, Amy. Hey, Maria. Darcy. All right, so there's my background pretty much. And um, I'm going to try to float some more pigment back here. Just get it light pigment. But I want to see some pigment granulate. So, But check out that artist um, that Maria had just um, shown. Unbelievable stuff. Really, really cool stuff. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm still looking at that, trying to make sure that that's dark enough so that when I make circle of confusion, circle of confusion circles there, it will be, um, it'll get lighter. Like I can get, I can go in there and lighten it up. Now the hair right here is going to be white and so um, it's going to be so light. And so now let's go right into this, keep on going down. I'm going to wet it down here, go through the face, keep a little bit of white of the hair. I'm just going to wet it. I didn't put any masking fluid anywhere. And when you're doing a face, don't go around the eyes. I see that a lot where people do go around the eyes and leave the white. It looks really weird. Um, you can always pick out, because it really shouldn't be way white. I mean, this one maybe has a little bit of white in there, but you don't have to make it so vibrant and it just stands out. It, makes it, it doesn't make it look soft when you're doing an eye. I notice a lot of people do that. They, they go through and then they just kind of go around the eye and keep that hard edged and it looks really scary. <laughs> and I'm going to make this again, I'm going to make this a a color of um, skin that is kind of close to white, but I'm going to make the use a jaune number four. That's a good color for flesh tones. And this is going to get lighter. So this is my, again, my lights. This is not my shadows that I'm going to put across the face. I'm going to do that later on. And then the hair, of course, is really dark right here and almost orange with a little bit of light red from light red meaning like a burnt sienna. Because Holbein's um, light red is like a burnt sienna. I guess I could use burnt sienna, but I like this color a lot. Okay, I'm going in here and just... Not sure why I put that light in there or the dark in there right now, but um, I thought I'd just keep it. I want to kind of see what kind of color I'm getting there. I probably shouldn't have put that in there right away. <laughs> Again, this is practice for me. I, when I'm here, I'm practicing on Sunday mornings and I'm just trying things that I haven't tried in a while and I want to better my skills in doing portraiture and color seeing what kind of colors I like to use and how they work together. It's all practice. You know, we all need to practice. I don't care how good you are. It's good to practice. 
different um, subject matter, different techniques, different paper. It's all practice. It's all just getting back and going, going there and practicing. I flicked a little bit of thing in there, but that's okay. I'm going to try to keep this soft edged and to a point, but then I do want to get um, yeah, nice red, rosy cheeks. This side is pretty much all in the, again, if I'm going with my lights, I'm just going to put them in there. I know they're going to get lighter. Um, so darken them just a slightly. I'm not going to put the shadow so much in. Well, maybe I can put a little bit of shadow in, but on a portrait, the most important parts are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. All this stuff in here doesn't really uh, matter if you get it exactly right because it's gonna it's gonna be the eyes, nose, and mouth that really show the um, face and how good it is. So your drawing is of utmost importance when it comes to doing the um, drawing and portraits. More than anything, I think. Um, the, the most important part of a portrait is the drawing. You used, I mean, I spent more time on a drawing yesterday than I probably did on a painting that I'll be painting it. And so I'm just going down here, getting, getting my lights, putting my lights in there. Jaune number four, again, I, I'm using for some of the some of the flesh tone together with orange and yellow and pink making kind of a salmony color and i'm not putting like i said i want to put i want to put some shadows across the face and i i don't know if you can tell i put them slight there but i want to make them more than i actually have there i really want to make it look like there's a lot of shadowing across the face from these leaves and stuff i think that's kind of a cool look so here's the lights and while it's wet, um, you can get some of the um, darks in there because it's soft edged. It all depends on how fast you can work and um, if you can get it done before it dries. So I'm going to take my round brush now and try to give it a little bit of the shadowing and get some of the colors in there that I want on this dark side of the face here. And you really have to know how much pigment to use compared to water. To not let it bleed all over the place. This is one time where your um, abilities for using enough pigment, making it stop, really comes in handy. I'm gonna put like thick amounts of orange in there. See how it's bleeding more than I want, but that's okay. You just um, get a little bit more pigment, dry off your brush on your towel, and then just go in. And it's all wet still, and I could use my um, mister, but it's still wet enough. And the one problem with the mister is if you hit it with too much water, then you kind of ruined it. So I'm gonna kind of just hit the darks a little bit here while it's soft. And when I'm in the cheeks area, I'm using more pink when I'm in the cheek area. When I'm in the forehead, I'm in more yellow area. And down here is more grayer area more for men than than for women because we have beards and we shave and so that gets to be a little bit darker here we're just gonna do a little bit of shading and i could also when it's dry i can go back to some light areas so you get some lights I like that you added the turquoise. The photo colors are all too warm. Yeah, I'll be putting um, a lot more of the turquoise in once I get the face kind of um, closer to where the darks are. And and even some in the hair um, later on when I do the hair. But doing the face and trying to get the soft edges on that first wash is just, you know, to me, it takes a lot of practice. And um, got to kind of hurry, but learning how to use enough pigment so it doesn't bleed all over the place is really, really a big thing about getting soft edges and getting them right and not letting them bleed all over the place. I can always go back in later and get the hard edges, 
but those soft edges to get them in the first wash is really tough, but it's doable. And that's what I'm practicing. That's why I wanted to practice this. I want to see if I can do that again. And I'll put makeup on her later with her eyes. I, I'm basically going to do it like if you're putting on makeup, I guess. You know, I'm just going to put some turquoise in her eyes. Like maybe it's eyeshadow. I put a little turquoise in there. And the darks and hard edges of the um, of the eyes then will show the, the, the contour and then the hard edges will show the actual the look of the actual eye. On Instagram his handle is Eudes Watercolor. I'll have to look at that too later on. I'll have to look at his work. Now this is right here. It's almost dry. I have to make sure I don't have that much water in here. I have to have just a little bit of water to get that little, little bit of... Basically, I'm doing the lights, and then I'll be going over with the dark darks. And I may have to re-wet like, areas to get the dark darks in there. But the hard edges will show the shape of like the lips, the nose, and the eyes. And that's what's pretty much more important than anything. And make sure that your drawing is on. I mean, you have to have your drawing to look. And now here, it got a little bit too dry. So it's going to be a little bit not as soft. I'm putting a little bit of water in it while I'm doing this. Right, and so the darks that are going to be in here, I can re-wet that. But right now, I'm just going to go in there now and get the... I'm still getting my lights. I'm still getting my light areas. Even though there's a lot of middle tone in here, but it's kind of together, you know. And I have to put that in there so they get the shape of the face. And, and while it's soft, and here is a little bit too much. So I use my towel a lot to take the water out of my brush. And I just want to get pure pigment down here. Because if I don't just take pure pigment and I put water in there, it's damp now. It's, it's starting to dry, so I've lost the sheen. So I really can't go in there anymore. So let's go into our, let's go into our other spots here. So I'm going to bring a little bit more of the turquoise in here. And I know the picture is all, like you said, like Maria said, it's very warm. And I don't want it to be all just like orange. I want the compliments to also be in there. And so here we're going to have some, some leaves and such. And some pink flowers. Well, actually, salmon-y color flowers. Orange flowers. Or buds. I mean, yeah, buds on the plants. So a little bit of turquoise and the orange together will look great together. So in Canuga, we are going to do a Lady on a Beach. Um, we have one, I just been going through all the um, references too, and one of them is going to be a Lady on a Beach. Um, I've done one before on the rocks, but this lady is going to be on the beach and got some seagulls, and so that'd be kind of fun too. Since we are south, and it'd be kind of nice to be able to do some of that kind of work. Though we're not at the, at the beach in Canuga, but we can pretend. And here's a little watermarks, and that's okay up here because that's that's fine to get some few watermarks there. Trying to be a little bit loose with this first wash here. And get some salmony color in here, orange. It's kind of fun practicing with you guys because it really makes me think about what I'm doing. <laughs> a lot of times when I'm in my studio, I'm not really thinking, I'm just painting. And so here to actually see what I'm doing and trying to explain it, it really makes it good for me to learn more. 
You know, it's kind of funny because you think as you know, as an artist who's done a lot of painting, I still have to think and kind of give myself a plan of attack. And, and also knowing that I have to tell you what I'm doing, then I make sure that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so try to make it look like I know what I'm doing. See how you can drop blue on top of salmon and it's it's fine it's you know it's kind of pastel -y, but it's okay it, you know it's kind of neat to do that so the leaves when i get to to the leaves are gonna be kind of a turquoise green when i do the leaves later on maybe some of this is hair Some of this is really dark, and I'm going to use some alizarin and some burnt sienna type color to get some dark in there. Just want to see what that's going to look like. This is going to be really dark, and so let's go up here now and get those lights together. We'll start with the light. Again, we're going to start with some turquoise here, some of the leaves. And since the sun is really close to there, I'm going to keep some of that stuff kind of yellowy orange. Again, salmon y. A little salmon. Pinkish orange is what salmon is. It's orange and pink together. And maybe some yellow right here on the. Still working my lights and mediums. I haven't gotten to my dark darks. That's what comes after the first two things, and then we go into the darks. And this isn't, you know, I'm not following the colors of the picture. You know, um, you could, if you ever do something that you really like the colors in the photo, then go ahead and do that. I, I'm trying to see what it's like to do it. You know, when I think and let's see what I can use color wise with this orange and and turquoise just trying to see if this will work oh she just got a beauty mark <laughs> one of the things i like about your sunday demos is hearing your thoughts process well thanks that's it's basically something i have to i'm actually basically trying to figure out what i'm doing <laughs> For your information for anyone interested in Kanuga is held annually the last week of March. It is for water media artists of all levels. Ten instructors, 200 painters. Pick an instructor to paint with all week. And they do have also one um, pastel class. So if you're a pastel artist, they also have one pastel artist too. Some acrylic. And I'm this year, I'm going to, I'm mostly teachers don't do this, bring all the supplies. But since I work with Holbein and Legion Papers a lot, um, I figure it's, if everybody's using the same thing, it makes it a lot easier. We don't have to worry about what you're using and it's going to be fun. All right. <clears throat> All right. I guess now we go with our big darks, our big middle tones and darks, our big area of middle tone, which would be the side of our face or hair basically. And maybe even the background a little bit more there. So... Big area of dark. Let me just go right in there. Might as well do that right away. It is dry, I think. Yeah, it's pretty dry. Always feel with the back of your hand. And so let's see. Let's go nice and dark, but nice and nice and powerful with a lot of color. I'm just gonna go over here, and I'm not wetting it first. I'm wetting it as I go along. And I am going to put some circle confusion circles there later. So, so when I say wetting as I go along, what I'm doing is I'm wetting with paint in my brush with a lot of water and then just wetting as I kind of go ahead and paint. Cause I don't want to wet it like first because I want to have some paint in there and I just want to kind of direct it a little bit better than if it's, 
I can keep my hard edges where I want my hard edges and I can even maybe do some of the circle confusion circles right here just by doing that. I do have my circle template with me today so we're going to do a little bit of the circle template. Drop some color in there and be, be generous with the amount of paint you use when you're doing inside a wash. Be generous. Put enough paint in there so that it can show what watercolor does best when you have a lot of pigment. See how much pigment I put in there? And I'm just going to put it in there nice and heavy. And show some of the hairs coming over this way. And this is kind of burnt out like optical scatter. And so I'm just going to not too much hard edges there. I'm just going to let it be soft edged. And come down here. Look at that, I'm taking pure red in there. I'll just put some pure red, just float it in there. And then do I really want this to be that hard edge right there? No, so I'm just gonna put a little water right there. Use a little alizarin and a little bit of orange and just get that hard edge right there around her cheek. There's like a little bit of dark right there. And then when I get the eyes, oh, mascara and stuff on, a nice dark, it's gonna be, it's not gonna even look that dark then. Right now it looks really dark because it's my darkest dark, except for that little bit I put up there. So now as I go down, I'm just going to wet it. Oopsie. My face a little bit. When you do a wash like this and you have a lot of water, put enough fresh paint in there. Just really make it sing with fresh, fresh paint. Now a little nice blue turquoise in there with the red, mixed with the red. And you notice how I don't mix it on a palette. I just go right in and it's wet. So I just let them mix themselves together. The red and the blue. The turquoise. I'll take some pure turquoise and look at that. Just let it just float in there. Go right down here. And it should go into the face. But I'm going to have to wait until I do the darks in the face. Because... I don't want to wet this right now and so otherwise I have to do the whole thing so I'm just gonna go down here and I'll come back in and try to get that all together I'm still working the side more than I am working the, the actual face so I don't want it hard edge all the way down but I can I can cover that up later by putting this dark because I just can't wet both of these I, it's just too hard to get all that done at once so we get down here by the neck Uh, no, the paper's not buckling because I'm using 300 pound. It's a little bit on the side here, and that's like I'm here picking up my light on my left here. A little bit, but no, it's not that bad. As long as, um, you know, I didn't, like I said, if I was on board, it wouldn't buckle at all, but I didn't have enough time to this morning to make myself a nice board. So I'm going in here now and getting some of the details, the darks, basically. Now let's go down this side of the face. And so when I do the face later, this is going to be dry, but I can make this soft edge as long as I get in there right then. Like I did, when I did the first wash, I'll have to go again with that because you can't just do parts a little bit. You have to kind of go through everything. And I have two th containers of water today. One I use, I can't tell here, but I have one that's my dirty water, my one that's clean water. And when I do a portrait, a lot of times, you know, you need a little bit more clean water. And so mostly I just have one there, but with the, with the, with a portrait, you got to be careful with when you're using dirty water, especially on the face later on. And I want to do, I also want to do those, like I said, I want to do the shadows across her face. So let's get some dark hair up here. And then what I'm going to do is I make this wet with some clean water. I'm going to put some clean water up here and just going to make this wet so it bleeds up into the hair up here. And I'm going to put some pure yellow orange up here to make it look like it's the optical scatter where it's it's right by the sun. If the sun's right there, then that'd be a nice and yellow right there.
if I ever miss a question because I can't go back up, if I miss a question and I didn't answer it or something, just do it, type it in again. Uh, you know, if I do want more of an answer and I, I missed it, I kind of just, a lot of times if you guys are asking a lot of questions, I don't see maybe one, just ask it again. I have no problem with that. Just go ahead and ask. Because I can't go over to my thing and move up. You know, I just, um, it's too much to do. So if I didn't answer it, please ask again. So I'm softening as I go along. I keep it, I don't wet it all right away. I'm just wetting it as I go along here. Give it a little bit more orange than that's actually in the photograph. Um, a little bit more, because right now it's kind of burnt out. It's kind of burnt out the picture right there because of the light. I'm kind of, a, I put too much contrast into it. And so I can just do a little bit more of the hairs there. Just make them really light and kind of yellow and and you notice how they're hard edged. It's okay to do hard edged and though now it's darker than the background. So now it's going to be hard to get the optical scatter. So I'm going to have to make the background darker again then. And that's fine. I can definitely do that. No big deal. So again, more color. Yeah, I'm very looking much to um, Kanuga. It's one of my favorite places. When you have 200 artists and, you know, 10 teachers, there's a lot of fun happening. I swear it's just a good time for four days, five days, basically. Um, it used to be, you know, you get there and they on it'd be five working days, but now it's four, but it's still, it's still a whole lot of fun. And it may be hard sometimes to get to your teacher if you want a certain teacher. I can't wait to see, um, uh, what's his name? Dylan Pierce, I think his name um, is going to be there. And his work is high key and I love his work. And I, I'm just dying to see it live because a lot of times, you know, work that's, you know, on a photograph doesn't sometimes give it the justice it deserves when you see it, when you see it live. And I would bring some of my work. I, some people that ask me if I'm bringing some of my work. Yes, I, of course I'm bringing some of my work. You always do. And it's, you know, it, it'll be for sale like anything else. Go down here now and get some darks in the face. See, I'm getting darker and darker. Getting more and more detailed. And then I'll get down to the nitty gritty which is the dark details step three and really that's going to take effect to a lot of what um the picture will look like then the, the photograph and you get all the little details and it really makes it look great so here it's kind of dark i may have to go over this later on and take some of the light out so this is kind of dark right here let's put a nice red there I'm painting like right through some of the blue that's going to be there later. Maybe the leaves are going to be there, but let's put a dark leaf right here. A little turquoise. Oop, too much, too much, too much, too much. All right, let's go now and do the face. And this is the hard part. <laughs> Yeah, this leaf shadows on the cheek and stuff. I put it in there. I put that in there. Um, I, I decided I wanted... It didn't have it in there, but I want the shadows falling across her face. And I couldn't find a good picture with, with shadows falling across a person's face. So I just made it up. I just took it in Photoshop and made my own little leaf things on there. And so let's do that. Let's go in there and put some shadowing on the face of the leaves. I'm using a, just a little bit slightly darker um, Jean number four, a little bit of the pink, a little bit of orange. I'm just going to go in there and make these leaves like they're coming across her head, her forehead. And 
and um, why not? You know, it looks cool. I, I like that look. Maybe it comes down here. Then I did, I did it across her nose. You, I'm not sure if you can tell. I did it across her nose. Because it'll give this the form of the nose, and then I go down here. And knowing the you know the form and knowing and doing you know years and years of drawing people's faces in advertising, you know what the big parts are and you know what to make go back and the cheeks come forward and you know all that stuff because you've done I've done so many drawings of that that um, this is not I'm not trying to copy a certain person it's just random you know I'm just making it look like a person like a, a woman who's got things across her face shadows across her face i know it may look weird but um some people would be like why did you ruin it with but eh, you know what you gotta try you gotta try stuff now let's put a little bit darker parts in now too while i'm at it because it's gonna be darker While it's wet, you gotta get those soft edges while it's wet. And you can wet it as you go along. Here, I'm wetting it around the eye. Now, see how there was not pure white in there? There's a little bit, but it looks really white, right? I mean, there's, there's some slight light, light colors in there, but I don't like to make it pure white. It just looks odd if you make it pure white. And so there's that part. Now we're going to this side. This part's a little bit darker. I was wondering about the photo and the picture. Oh, yeah. Put some more eyeshadow in there. I can make some of this blue in there. Might as well make some of it blue. Make this dark. I can get her eyelashes later. I'm not that again that's a detail wait for their details you can get that later this is just the big areas and the soft edges and the and then we're going to get some maybe some leaf shadows here all right now i'm gonna take my smaller brush because this whole side is a little bit darker and remember i said i wanted to soften that edge on the edge so now i can wet this whole area again and kind of go in there and re re wet this and retake my values. Because this whole side of the face is a little bit darker, so I can re wet it. Maybe put some purple in there. No, the turquoise, that's what we gotta do. A little turquoise. Boy, my, my light, you can tell. I think I have my dark glove on because there's so much light in here and it just really kind of goes back and forth. I notice, see when I take it away, it kind of gets light and dark. I was having a hard time figuring out what value I'm using. I love working wet in the wet and getting those soft edges. It's just so much fun if you if you really practice it, really try to practice being able to work in a wet wash and just work it until you get it done. Don't leave this area until it's what you want. Especially when it's soft, you gotta you gotta keep on working it until you get it to where you want it to be. And then you can leave it, but not until then. You can't leave that area until you get it done. I go right into the background. So you don't really see that much of what's where the side of the face is. A couple of spots I'll do darker later on. And now let's get my small brush over underneath the nose. And she looks kind of scary right now, but don't worry. It's going to be fine. I have to get in there and get some of the darks. Or middle tones. It's actually pretty much just still the middle tones.
practice, practice, practice. Um, and even if you're just practicing that painting, but drawing of the face, that's, that's just as important. You know, do some sketching. Like the, the gentleman we just, the website that uh, Maria was talking about. You look at his, the drawing of his people are just amazing. Kind of sketchy in some ways, but then really nice and tight in some areas. Let's put some color in here too underneath her nose. Let's put a little bit like warmth in there. Maybe a little warmth like it's reflecting. I'm going to try to soften the bottom part right here so it goes up into the nose softly. So we're a little bit higher up. And it is, um, it's not a one shot deal. Um, because you can only go back into it, but you try to do it in one shot. Your idea is that my thinking is I try to get these things all done in one shot. Like I, maybe if I were not doing it for a video, maybe I could get that in the very first wash when I'm doing that very, very single first wash where I'm doing my lights. Um, but that's hard. What the heck did I do here? I think, I, did I just put my finger across that? Like she has acne here now. I'm gonna have to scrub that out a little bit. Not sure what I did there. I think I put my my finger into that area. It's a little bit big there. Let's go a little bit more orange. Are you using turquoise on the shadow side because the lavender has white in it? Um, yeah, I'm using turquoise and not lavender because it, it'd be too chalky, I think. And I, I want to keep it with the lavender, not the lavender, but with the turquoise because of the orange and the red, you know, because I, that's the compliment. So that's why I'm kind of not using purple today as much. Well, not at all, actually. <laughs> it's kind of funny. They just put in all new fresh paints, too. And I put in a lot of lavender. Since I was putting all of my paints into it for you guys at Canuga, I thought I'd fill up my palette too. Let's put a little turquoise in there. It's a little bit too small a brush. I like working with a little bit larger brush so that it has a little bit more water in it. Getting some. You know, this has to be all wet now, and I'm going to wet it as I go along and just kind of get it nice and soft, get the nice shadows going on in there. I'll have to go back into this shadow. That shadow kind of turned out terrible. I'll have to go back in there later, get that wet again. And see how I was talking about before, like the shadow, the dark below the chin. Now, I, now it's all wet again. Now I can go in there and make this part a little bit darker, get soft edged. Just work it slow. Work it slow. I, I tend to work too fast, and that's what this um, these last couple of days I've been watching techniques or live um, demonstrations by some of the artists. And Peter Jablico did one. On, man, it was just beautiful how he did all his um, techniques of texture. And um, Peter did a great, great, great looking at how he got texture in his work. Now... <laughs> beauty mark now he was showing us how to do um, texture in his work I don't know if you've seen Peter Jablico's work but he does very very much texture work and um, he showed us how he did it and it's takes it's very time consuming there may be like seven eight layers of it but um, time consuming that made me think it's like you know don't worry about how much time it takes you but just do it to make it look right if it takes you that many times, it takes you 40 hours to do a painting, then that's how long it takes you. But slow down and get it right. Make sure that you get it nice and right. Let's put a little bit of purple in here. I will take a little bit of purple with the red. Right down here. How much time do I get? Okay. I gotta hurry up here a little bit. Do 
I don't want to rush this either. I don't, I want to, um, I'm practicing, so I don't want to rush it. And when you're doing a portrait, it is going to be a little bit tougher than, because if you're off a little bit with the drawing, then in, in the painting of it, then you're going to be really off. And so you don't want that. I'm going to make this here. All right, let's do, let's do our features now. And like things like this, the, um, the tree branch here and the, with the pet, that's easy. I mean, that's the easy part. The hard part is again, going to be the features. So let's do the features now and do a top of her lip, which is going to be dark. Of course, I wouldn't make it super, super red, you know, cause I don't, I, I don't want to make it look like she's got really bright lipstick on. I just want to make it look like they're warm. And you can make some of this edges soft too of the lips. You don't have to make it hard all the way around. Like when it goes over here, it kind of gets soft. And then a lot of times there's a little bit of a lip right there. Like it gets a little dark right there. Okay, let's see. And the bottom lip, I'm going to make a little bit pinker. So I'm going to take actually pink. And the little opera. So you find a, a nice clean space on your palette. And because um, it's darker on this side, and I don't want to touch the dark I just did, otherwise I, then I, I get up, I have a problem there. Come over here. Darker, some alizarin over here to make it just the part where it divides right where the top lip meets the bottom lip that's where you can put a little nice dark mark there the same thing with the nostrils we can put the right in the nostrils you make them warm make really dark but really nice and warm nice and warm Otherwise, if you make it cool, the nostrils, it looks dirty. It looks like you have dirty nostrils. You don't want that. Now, the color of her eyes, of course, are going to have to be turquoise, right? And so we're going to go in there and do some turquoise eyes. And when it comes to the look of the eye to make it look wet, I'm going to show you on another sheet of paper how I do that. Because I can't show you right here. What I do is I do the color opposite the, the high the highlight the highlight is going to be your your point of where the highlight is and then opposite the, where the highlight is you're going to make that the lightest blue or turquoise of the eye and then you put the pupil in after that so i make the whole color of the eye but i opposite where this where the highlight is i'm going to take a little bit of that blue out and make it light opposite the roundness of the of the iris you make that part light you can even put a little bit of light blue in there take a little white and put it right here opposite the highlight and i don't care what you see in the photograph that happens it, it just is the way that you make the eye look really real now our eyelashes are are not are red she is red hair so let's make her eyelashes red Reddish, you know, burnt sienna like. And some of it you can make look like it's um, each individual hair, and then you can make some of it not look like it's individual hair. It's like a little bit of both. You kind of make it soft edged. Some parts can be soft edged, and some parts can be a little bit darker, harder edged, where you actually see the hairs. This side is a little bit darker. Don't be afraid of getting nice and dark. Like a burnt sienna. Again, I use, I don't use burnt sienna. I use light red. Hope I mix the color name light, light red. It's like, it's very close to it. <clears throat> 
very cool doing a multimedia portrait that's kind of what Jean Peterson will be doing at Canuga. if you don't know Jean Peterson she's gonna be at Canuga also and she does some great great portraiture I've taken her class before and had so much fun because um, like all this stuff on the outside would be like you do a little bit of parts in the inside and then the outside just stands out I mean it's just really gorgeous I love working um, and it's acrylic I think it's a multimedia actually same thing it's multimedia and it's it's gonna be a great class oh my god now it's out of focus what the heck happened here it's really having a hard time with all my lights I got going on here today wow stop it Let's go with some orangey leaf petals here. Or some blossoms, I mean. There's some blossoms up there next to the orangey. Some yellow up there too. And of course turquoise, we gotta get those turquoise leaves up there. Because we had parts of it as turquoise over here, and so might as well get them in there. So basically, I'm, I'm acting like the leaves are going to be turquoise, and the blossoms are going to be the color <coughs> orange. <coughs> Excuse me. that green mm -hmm. yeah it's okay and so when I say red you know you're using a little bit of everything orange red yellow pink I like having a little bit of pink in there with the red And there are some really, really dark um, leaves here that come, come through that are really, really dark. And so you may want to get some of those in there. Let's wait for that. Let me get the rest of the face done um, with the details so that you can see that. Because we only got a few more minutes left here. And I'm probably going to finish it after I get done here. So I'm going to take, and now I'm basically taking my small brush, giving her eyelashes, giving her um, the fine, fine details. And this, you want to make it really detailed. And I'm basically going to use black, you know, like it was mascara. And so I'm just basically putting mascara on her, on her eye, and going to make it the pupil super black. And then just go down here with black. And that's what it would be anyways, right? I mean, I think your mascara is black color. And so just put that right in there as dark, dark you can, as you can. And then I put the eyelashes on. This is, de this is detail too, and I want it to be detailed. I mean, this is the part where you really want it to pop forward and really look good. And that's the part um, that's nice to kind of do, really nice and detailed, where normally, you know, I don't want to do everything this detailed, but the center of interest, I want to get there. I'll make it look nice and super detailed. Just use a little bit of red in the eye right here where the eye tear duct is. A little bit of red right there. And let's get a little bit downwards and so a little nice little eyelashes. You decide on how long you want them. A bit darker in some of the eyelashes, eyebrow, I mean. 
And so the white of her eyes, there's a little bit pink right there. So I gotta, I gotta kind of pink that up so it all looks kind of even, and not make it because there's actually a shadow underneath the lid. And so I gotta put a little bit of shadow and softness underneath the lid, so it doesn't look so harsh. I had an art instructor a long time ago that used to always tell us to add red inside the darks of the nostrils too. Most people, including me, would go into the straight black. Yeah, you know, you want to make your um, nostrils not black and not dark uh, blue or, or it looks dirty. Really, definitely put red in there. Put warmth. Put warmth in your, in the nostrils. It makes it look clean. Same thing with the right here by the um, even where the where the lip meets the bottom, the top lip meets the bottom lip. You can make that nice and red, super red. I'm gonna put like I said, I'm gonna put red in the nose too. You can shadow it with red, with warmth. some of these things in some of the some of these this is going to be the little flowers there and I'm not sure it's so light that I, you're not gonna be able to see that this part is not super right but I'm gonna make that optical scatter or not optical scatter circle of confusion circles to make it look like it's out of focus type of thing Let's do these first. I have to go over a little bit again this week. I've been going over a lot, so it's. I've been doing some tough things that, that are a little bit tougher than um, I do on my Thursday nights. One because it's like I'm practicing myself, and so just want to show you what I'm doing. You can always, like, if you need to leave, you can go ahead and um, always, it's always going to be here. So you can come back to it if you need to. Let's do some, let's do some rubbing out here real quickly. I'm going to rub out a little bit of this dark area to get some of the light. That's the nice thing about this paper is I can rub out a little bit. All I do is take a little bit of water, go over it. And that way it'll be a little bit more blue. Same thing with this part. I'm going to make this red a little bit. I'm taking away the red so I can put the blue there. Because if I mix it together, then it's going to be like a dark, dark color. And I want a little bit more pure color of the, of the leaves, of that turquoise leaf. Should do it when it's not when it's wet here, but that's okay. I don't have time. See now it doesn't mix with the red underneath. It it sits on top, but still gives me a nice blue look to it. So there's nothing wrong with rubbing out an area and getting rid of that color, and then adding another color on top of that, because now it's wet, right? And go in there with the turquoise and then just add turquoise into that wash. Give a little dark hits. doing two multimedia portrait projects this weekend. Oh, that's awesome. You have to show us. Her right cheek. This cheek looks a little big. Oh, her right. This cheek looks too big. 
actually down here it's so her chin is like she has a double chin so I'm gonna definitely get rid of the double chin the nice thing is you can go back in you know it's no big deal to go back in and get things um, softer or um, get the drawing a little bit better now let's go back in a little bit better. Thanks for the advice. This cheek? Oh yeah. So I got, I think I'm gonna get more of the hair shadowing it. That's what I can do too, is get more of this shadow right here. And then bring that in here. And let that bleed out into there. Here through here. Get this part a little bit darker underneath her eyes. I don't want to give her bags underneath her eyes, but I do want to make this a little bit darker. And I think I'm going to stop for now to show you guys what it is. See, this is so light, you don't even see anything. That's how white, look how white it is. My lights are way too light or something today. I should have toned them down a little bit, my lights. So let me put the, I'm going to put a wash in here for the final. I'm going to still show you how to do um, circle of confusion circles. Because it'd be nice to have a little bit of, a little bit darker, and then I can bring those in. So I'm going to redo the dark here. Or the um, light area here, but just so enough that later on I can Gosh, it's already down. turn off this turn off this light. Yeah, the, the, I must say that this paper is awesome for rubbing out, um, rubbing out areas. The Stonehenge Aqua, it's really nice for rubbing out. Um, so I made this darker, so I'm gonna wait for that to dry, and you can check it out later on my any of my social media platforms because I'm gonna I'll put it on there with the circle confusion circles, and I want to show you my circle confusion circle template. It's just this, and so what I'll do is I'll be going in there. When it's dry, I can't do it now, but I will put it down there. I'm just going to rub it out and rub out again my light. Let's see, boy, it's my, I, I have way too much light in, on the subject today. But that's pretty much it, guys. I think, um, unless you guys see something that I need to do, this hair right here, because that's a circle of confusion circle two that I'll be putting in there. So I'm just going to kind of put some more hairs here. Round circle. A few more of these, and I think we're good. And we got a really dark turquoise leaf going from here off. Let's see, any more questions? I think I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. And um, like I said, I, I will. I know there's a circle right there, but there's gonna be more of those. So, but I can't do it until it dries. And for some reason, my lighting today was really terrible. I'm not sure why, because this is a very light picture. But if you look at it, I'm gonna block the light. <laughs> Let's see if I turn this off. If you see it better. Let's see. A little bit better. But yeah, so there it is. And that's all wet right now. And so once I get that dried, I'm going to put a couple of these circles. And there were, um, you can buy circle templates, but this is basically um, uh, plastic. You can use like Yupo paper or they make st um, stenciled paper. You can buy like a Hobby Lobby. And to make a circles, I have one of these. I have a, um, 
it's a knife compass. Um, it's, it's from Alvin, um, and they, this, I think a lot of, this has a little razor blade right here on the end. You can tell it's like a little razor blade on the end there. And, um, and you just, I, I basically cut a circles out of the templates. And so that's the way I'm gonna get my circle confusion circles. The ones that you can see in the picture right here. So right here in the picture, you see that right there. I'll be putting those in there. And that's it. All right. So have a great rest of the weekend. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way. Um, I'm sure you all celebrated yesterday, so many of you are probably still in bed. <laughs> so um, have a great, great rest of the day. And paint some portraits. Give it a shot. Give it a try. All right. Until next Thursday, which we're going to be doing a little girl in the in, um, sunset scene. Um, we'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye.